Sup guys, He King here bringing you another manga review this week, or in this case, a, a double manga review because I didn't do a review last week, and that's because I had COVID, guys, okay? So yeah, I was pretty ill, and I couldn't be asked to do it, so yeah, give me a break for that, guys, please. Uh, forgive me for that, if you will. But yeah, this week's One Piece, well technically last week's One Piece and this week's One Piece, and we're doing a double review of chapters 1045 and 1046. So I'm just going to go right through this chapter very quickly, just to sort of recap what's going on. Uh, if I remember correctly, there wasn't a whole lot going on in this chapter, it was just one big massive action set piece, with Luffy now in his awakening mode, kicking the crap out of Kaido, and Yamato and Momonosuke basically sort of uh, standing there where they are and watching from the distance from where they can and being spectators basically. So yeah, it was a pretty amazing chapter. A lot of people apparently didn't like it. I, I don't know, there was a lot of negativity towards it from certain uh, crowds and um, for, for it not being serious enough or something and it's like, it's like this is One Piece, like One Piece is all about the fun and the adventure, it's never supposed to be taken serious, it's a series you can take serious, yes, in terms of certain aspects that will happen, but in the end of the day, when, when it gets crazy, it's, it gets crazy and for good reason and it makes sense in that world, do you know what I mean, just sort of just switch off and go, oh no, this is, this is, this is ridiculous, it's like, it's like if you never see what happened every time Luffy went into different gears, like when he went into gear 2, when he went into gear 3, when he went into gear 4, come on, like, like what is wrong with people, like, it's ridiculous, but Let's start off with this chapter, man. We we get this we get this cover uh, like this cover page, uh, if you will. Technically, I think it's the cover for the magazine. Really, the adventure continues. A super climax versing Kaido in the well, Wano arc and the 25th anniversary caravan truck project. I don't know what that. I don't even know if that's part of One Piece, whatever that is. But uh, yeah, we get this little uh, cover shot of uh, Luffy, obviously Slick holding their straw hat, and then we go down into the chapter itself. Um, so we get this big nice cover spread with the various characters, yep, 25th anniversary, that's crazy man, like that's in 25 years of One Piece, that's, wow, that's nuts, but yeah, we, we go on to the first page, obviously where we left off, and yeah, uh, Kaido just go, you know, I, I was sure you were a god after that, uh, a new level, gear fifth. And Luffy's just bouncing around up and down, just having the time of his life. And he was like, so was I, ha ha ha. Like, he's just, he's just gone like crazy. No, he's basically Bugs Bunny at this point. I've had to make a comparison to a character. He's Bugs Bunny. He's Bugs Bunny, like, and it's hilarious. And and, and Kaido's basically Elmwood Fraud. Is that, is that how you say his name? Like, uh, oh God. So yeah, the, the chapter is called Next Level. So yeah, it, it is a next level. Like, like the the... The, the poetry in that title alone, like, not just because Luffy's on the next level, because, because because it's literally gone to the next level. The stuff that happens in this chapter, like, the stuff that Oda pulls with Luffy in terms of his new moveset and power set, like, it's insane. So, since you're able to make your surroundings rubbery, it should be safe to say you awakened your paramecia fruit, but something about this feels off. Even Kaido realizes this is like his fruit is isn't like a parasite. Because I think we we found out last chapter that it's a Zoan type fruit, isn't it? It, it? it's something that transforms the Nusa as well. It's not just the environment that transforms, it transforms the environment and the Nusa. A transformation like this is more typical of a Zoan fruit. Hmm? Like even Lu like Luffy, like Lu Lu Luffy like, he's just chilling. Like he's just bouncing down up and down and he's chilling like and he's like hmm? like even Luffy doesn't realise like his fruit is different. Like he hasn't come to that realization that he's transformed himself as well, like, and Kaido tries to swallow this dude, okay, he, he, he actually, like, bites down on Luffy and, and eats him whole, and we get the craziest moment in this, the first craziest thing in this chapter is, is Kaido swallowing Luffy, and Luffy basically beating the crap out of Kaido from the inside, like, he's inside Kaido in dragon form, and he's beating him up from the inside, okay, like, it's hilarious, and, and he, end, he ends up turning into a balloon. He ends up turning a, into a balloon. He's like, how does that feel? Jesus, like, Christ. Like, imagine you swallow something and, and it just bursts up inside you, like... Like, the organs, like, obviously, uh, if, if this was, like, real life, you'd die. Okay? You'd die. I mean, uh... What's a good comparisons here to do? Uh, what's a good comparisons? 
Well, I don't want to go into dirt into, into any dirty business, so I'm not I'm not even gonna bring that up. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, have you seen the off brand? Have you seen certain off brands? Have you seen the very serious kinds of off brands where you know the you know the chick is very small and the monster is very big and then she you know upon you know the pleasure point of of the uh, monster you know the chick just ex ex expands and explodes basically in a nice gory fashion of blood and guts. Yeah, this this is. This is the opposite, I mean, it, it's close to that, but it's the opposite of that, except there is no exploding guts here going on, because, uh, it, it's one piece, okay, it's not gonna happen in this, but if this was realistic, yeah, Kaido would be dead right now, so, yeah, you can even feel the pain on Kaido, like, that, that this is happening, and, 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 yeah, like, yeah, this shot right here, just Kaido in the air, and, and, like, he, like, he's just, his entire, like, midsection is just, like, pfft. And Yamato and Momonosuke see this, and they're like, what's that? What the heck is going on? No idea. It looks like Kodo put on weight. Is this some form of ease? And it's like, like, this is your dad, okay? Like, you should you should be the one to know most about your dad, right? And you're, you're asking if this is a new form. I doubt it. No, I doubt it, sweetheart. This isn't a new form of ease. And Kaido, like, he looks at his stomach. He looks at his overbearing stomach. He's like, damn it, how are you doing this? Your body is meant to be robbery, not mine. Which is crazy, because Kaido's body is based... So, what I'm getting from this is that when Luffy touches people, their bodies turn into rubber as well. So, like, the fact that Kaido's ingested him, it's affecting Kaido's body as well to the point where it's turning into rubber as well, which is insane. Like, um... And, and we see Luffy inside. It's like, hey, I see a pair of bright eyes. We see Luffy inside Kaido. And he... Oh, my God. I can see why people w wouldn't be able to take this serious, but it's hilarious. It is hilarious. Like, imagine when this gets animated. This is going to be like, what the hell? Like, this is... This is older on a very... I'm going to say this is older on a very good acid trip. Okay, he's having a time of his life drawing this. You can tell. This isn't him ha having a very bad trip. This is him on good acid. This is him on the good stuff. Okay, he took some good stuff. And he's having a time of his life. And he was like... He's like... Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be drawing this. Like, th this is it. This is older at top pinnacle, okay, as a manga artist. Because the stuff he's pulling in, okay, he's got Luffy's arms reaching literally out of Kaido's eyes. Out of Kaido's eyes and grabbing his nose, right? And, and he goes, Goma Goma no escape rocket and he bursts out of Kaido's mouth while swinging and hanging onto his whiskers for Christ's sake like his nostrils it's insane and he's got this new laugh now like which is like she 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 like she 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 and he, Luffy just looks demented okay he looks demented and he goes he goes right into the air and you know Goma Goma Nomo and, and, and Yamato and Momonosuke they are seeing this and Luffy, the next spray we get of Luffy, he's turned into a giant, okay, he goes Goma Goma no Mo Gigantai, Giganti or whatever you could say it, and he's turned himself into a giant, the dude's turned into a giant, okay, he can do that now, he can do that now, he can turn into a giant version of himself, and Kaido's like, like, you know, like, like, he's not even flinching, like, he's, he's surprised, but like, he has no words for this. He's not surprised. He's not like scared. He's just like, he's like, uh, and, but Momonosuke is like, who is that? What? Luffy's voice is coming from that thing. Is that really it? like, and, 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 oh my God. And, and what happens next? Like, I, I can't even tell what happens here because it looks like, it looks like Kaido goes to bite him. He goes to bite him and Luffy's screaming while he's grabbing onto right Kaido's head. And he's like, go and go. And he's grabbing, he grabs Kaido's head and he grabs his body and he goes, go and go and me jump rope. Go and go and me jump rope. I want to tell you right now, yeah. When this fight with Luffy versus Kaido happened, and I ain't talking about before, like when Luffy went into fifth gear. I'm talking about beforehand. I was like, if 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 one of these, if, if Luffy doesn't do something where he ends up getting Kaido and using him as a jump rope, I'm going to be disappointed. And I kept thinking that, oh, there's not going to do that. There's just no way it's going to happen. Like, how is Luffy going to be big enough to grab Kaido and swing him above and using him as a jump rope or even like a freaking whip or a slinky? It's not going to happen. 
It happened. It happened. The thing I wanted to happen, happened. Oda pulled it off, okay? He did the unexpected. He did the craziness. And now we've got Luffy using Kaido as a job rope. It's insane. It's unexpected. It's, 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 it's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's like, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, this is awesome. This is awesome. And you're telling me you're not having fun reading this chapter and seeing that? Are you kidding me? Look at this. Look at this! Luffy is using him as a jump rope! Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, how can you not sit- how can you sit there and go like, Oh yeah, it's- it's- Oh, this chapter sucks. Like, no! No, look at- Oh my god. Oh god, give me a second, guys. Okay, so continuing on. He's flinging him. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he's going up or if he's going down. I think he's launched himself up above uh, Onigashima and he's gone into the air. And, and you know, Kaido, you know, he's because he's so close to Luffy, he's going for that blast breath now. And he shoots it off. And, yeah, it, it's hit Luffy and he's like, it burns. He's hit Luffy. We see Luffy come crushing down. Yamato sees this and she's like, he just took a blast, blast breath head on. And yeah, Luffy looks like he's scorched and he's falling down. He's falling down, but then he wakes up again. His eyes snap open and he's like, that's the last straw. And he positioned himself. And now he's pulling off the uh, crazy cartoony Looney Tunes style of running. Okay, it's you know you know when you speed your legs up. I would imagine people are going to compare this to uh, the Pain arc, you know, when, when Pain was just, you know, that crazy animation that we got with Pain versus the Ninetales, when Pain just sort of starts speeding and he's running on the water. That's what Luffy's doing right now, but he's doing it on air. He's doing it on air, and it's nuts. It's nuts, and he burns. He's burning the air. I don't know if this is air, like, you know, air puff, like, whatever that you're seeing, or if this is puff as in, like, a blazing trail of fire, like, because that's what's going on. He's blazing through the sky, and he's going back to Onogoshima, and he's going, Gome Gome no Mi, towards Kaido. Kaido clearly is tired, because he's, he's breathing, he's breathing, and he's like, he's like, free world conquest, run, you know, rag, Ragnaroku. He's going for his attack, he's going for his lightning club attack. Luffy's going for his own attack. And, yeah, I'm, uh, this next panel, I'm going to stop here, guys, but this next panel, Jesus, Oda is killing it. He's killing it, and he's killing us with it, like, it's, uh, how can you hate this? So, yeah, continuing with the chapter, both of these guys go for an attack. Luffy's going for whatever Gomu Gomu no Mi's attack he's going for, and Kaido goes for his free world conquest, you know, clubbing lightning black attack, if you will. I think, he, I think he's hard with hockey. And the next panel we see Luffy's giant head crushes through the roof and mask style his eyes pop up while he's screaming tongue out like ah like that and all the people down below see this you know the beast pirates see this they're looking up and uh, they're basically crapping their pants what and all the other characters that are down there in the vicinity see this okay we get their reactions and their eyes end up coming out of their freaking uh, uh, eye sockets we got law kid chopper nami and uh, Ta tama seeing this and Luffy, he tries to go back out and he gets stuck. He gets stuck, okay? He's trying to pull his head through and he gets stuck. So he has to go for like... And squeeze himself through like that. And he goes back out. He goes back out. Facing Kaido again. And he falls back down. Going back into his normal human-sized humanoid form. And Kaido's just like... It's like something out of a picture book. Yeah, it literally is. This is... Like I said. Like, it, it, it Looney Tunes, man. It's Bun's Bunny stuff. Like... Ah, you can tell Oda had a lot of fun drawing this chapter. Like he, th this was him. You know, this whole like stuff with Wano that he's been doing was a lead up to this. Basically, okay, he wanted to get to this point. And if you've been reading his messages or even recent comments and that that he's been leaving, sort of like you know, like he's like he's been waiting to do something. Like he he's been waiting to do something crazy and that. And this is it, like, like you can tell, man, like, and he's enjoying the crap out of drawing this, and it's so freaking great. Uh, we got Luffy just, just standing there, and he's like, man, that stings. And Kaido, I'll admit, you put on quite the show, but still, you're at the end of your rope. You can't beat me. And he's like, shut up. I'm far from done. And, and we see the energy, we see the awakening starting to go, because uh, the color, like, Luffy's all white now. He's all white, but the whiteness starts to disappear. 
and Luffy starts to get tired, and it looks like he's starting to get old because it's like it's like all the air or or water or whatever, like you know that. Like he's getting dehydrated, basically. That's what it looks like. He's getting dehydrated and he's collapse collapsing. He's falling. He's like I'm beat, and Kaido's just like, "What the hell are you?" And he sits down. He sits down. And he's like, "Okay." And, and and Luffy's like, "Okay, you're right. I'm about to croak. This has taken a lot out of me." And Kaido's like, "You can rest easy and die then." Tales will be told about how you how you all fought this war. And then Luffy's like, "Who cares about that?" And Kaido's like, "What?" Like like he's confused. Like. When you're dead, only your bones stick around, she, she, she. And, and like, Luffy's, like, struggling. He's, like, he's trying to get that power back. And and then we cut back to Yamato and Momonosuke. And Yamato's like, Yamato's like, it really is Luffy. He was unrecognizable with his hair and clothes all white like that. So we get the confirmation. Again, this could be a translation error for now. But it seems we get confirmation that when Luffy goes into his awakening or gear fifth, he turns all white. Like, like, air, basically. Or maybe, like, the sun. I mean, technically the sun's orange, yellow, bright, bright yellow, golden, red. But maybe, maybe it's pure white light, if you will. Maybe it's like that. But and and, and Momonosuke realizes, but his face is still qu fading quickly. So yeah, Luffy is going out. He's going out. He's losing his strength. But this happens. This has always happened. Like if you remember back uh, 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 with Luffy versus Doflamingo, like back in the seven hundred chapters, wherever you know when Luffy went to Gear Four, he, he you know he lost he lost the ability with it as he was fighting, and then he could get it back and then go for the final hit. It's very similar to that. Okay, Oda likes to repeat these sort of symbolism when it comes to uh, these specific kind of fights. It's the same thing. Luffy's gonna. You know, his power is going to drain from him. He's going to have to rest a bit and then it's going to come back. But uh, we stick to this. We stick to this now with Luffy. He's like, we're not done yet. And he's like, isn't that right, Momo, Tama, Kinemon, Petro? He's voicing all the people that he made promises to. All the people have been struggling and that and, and trying to like win, doing all of this. This entire war has been, uh, has been by these people to fight Kaido and... He promised to help and he's doing it for them, he's doing it for Momo, he's doing it for Tama, he's doing it for Kinemon. And the fact that he references Pedro as well, man, like that speaks volumes. Like, Pedro died chapters ago, chapters ago, back in uh, Layer Cake Island. And he's remembering him because, you know, Pedro died for this. Like, yeah, he, he wasn't here when they got to Wano, but he died to get, you know, to get those people essential to Wano. Like, he, he died trying to save Sanji, for Christ's sake. So, you know, the, you know this, this all started... All the way back then, do you know what I mean? Like it's all started then and into now, like, and it's beautiful. I, I love the fact that Luffy mentions him. It's it's nice. It's like yeah, this character died. This character who you know people always say oh no one ever dies and that, but people characters do die. Maybe not a lot, not a lot in, in terms of like anime like or stories like Naruto and that. Uh, but characters do die, and uh, when they do die, they do live and uh, they do leave a big impact. And Petro was definitely one of those characters that left at least somewhat of an impact for us. Uh, and Kylo's like he's laughing. Whoa, 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 hey, you're really gonna kill yourself. He's smiling. He's happy about this. He's enjoying himself. Kylo himself is enjoying himself as well. You got you gotta take this into account. He's having the time of his life as well. He's fighting someone on equal footing at this point. And he's enjoying it, okay? He's happy. Like, he might scream, he might shout some angry things, but he's enjoying himself. And he's showing Luffy uh, a, a lot of respect. The fact that Luffy gets tied out and Kaido decides not to even hit him right there and there. He's like, he's he takes a seat down. He's like, rest up and, and you know, just, you know, if you die, you die. Except you're deaf. Uh, and not, but like, no, he, I, I, gotta, I gotta say, that's, that's it's nice of him to do that. It's, a, it, it's, it's nice to sort of see that side of him that makes sense. So the fight goes on, he's like, after all of this, do you really think something like death can scare me? And get loud again, heartbeat. And he goes back into his uh, gear, gear fifth mode, and Kaido's like, so be it. And he raises the club, and Luffy's like, that's it, this is the sound. And Yamato's seeing this, and she shouts out, Luffy, watch out. And Luffy glares, and he sees the club coming, and the club hits him. But all it does is stretch him out into the freaking uh like like he's 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 gone on the club like a cover basically and he's stretching him out and he looks like uh what's the best comparisons he looks like the sun from death from uh soul eater remember that smiling creepy laughing sun he looks like that another comparisons would be like uh, something from uh, that uh cop game I've I've not really played it 
but people were making the comparisons like oh he looks like that thing from cop game I, I i don't know i think the flower maybe but personally i think he looks more like the the laughing creepy son from uh soe there so no definitely a nice little thing happening there bloink and you know, I was like, what? And Luffy, Luffy's head, it's stretched out to the point where it stays like this and he's running away. He's doing his little wheel running away and he's like, it hurts. And Kaido's going for the hit again and he smacks him down, trying to squish him. But instead, the ground ends up bending. Remember, like, it look, like it look, since he's awakened, Luffy, like, wherever it, he touches, technically turns into rubber as well. And he twists and turns and he goes into the air, spinning around. And he goes around into the buildings and he's still spinning. He's like, one, two, three, zero. And Kaido's like, what? Like, he's just questioning, like, what's going on? And Luffy ends up zooming, throwing himself towards Kaido while spinning hard. He's spinning, spinning, spinning now. You know, like, like, like the Podge's Ray, it's like a Beyblade, basically, he's spinning towards Kaido, and he's like, what in the world is this pure white transformation? Like, Kaido is confused by this, like, he, he's questioning what this is, he's coding, he's coded with on, uh, armament, and conquers hockey, and he can influence anything around him with his ability, he fights with such freedom, so versatile, I have never seen anything like it. There is no one, and he, and he, and he says, like, there's no one in this world capable of taking me down. And we get the craziest moment here. Like I, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm seeing here. I don't get what's going on. But it looks like, it looks like Luffy ends up punching through Kaido's head. He punches through Kaido's head, and his fist comes out the other side. Yamato and Momo see this. Like it's insane. He punched through Kaido's head. He punched through his face for Christ's sake. And Kaido falls down and his face is fine. Like, what happened there? Like, what? And, and Luffy ends it with, I'm having the time of my life, Kaido. And he's smiling still. And yeah, it ends like that. The chapter ends like that. And it's insane. He's beating on Kaido and he punched his fist through his head. Like, what? How is he not dead? How is he not dead? Robber, maybe? I don't know, but, uh, what the hell? What the hell, guys? Like, what, what, like, seriously, whatever odor was, was smoking, like, I, I want it. I want it. I don't, I don't, I don't partake, but it, when I see stuff like this, it's like, you gotta be on some very high good stuff to be able to, like, come over with ideas like this. I, I want some. I want, I want that imagination. I want to take some of this and, and, and get imagination like this. Like, come on. Like, give it to me, man. Like, come on, Oda. Let's, let's just get together one day and just, like, you know, like, 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 share a, like, share a uh, joint or something, man. Like, come on. Like, this guy, like, seriously, like, Luffy's having the time of his life. Oda's having the time of his life. Like, like, he drew that for Christ's sake. He drew that. And, uh, and, and the insanity of this chapter, like, it's insane. It's insane. But it's a good bloody action chapter. Like, it's over the top. It's hilarious. And it fits Luffy's character, personality, and mood. Like, what we're seeing of Gear 5. It's extraordinary, like, like, holy crap, basically, like, holy crap. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that was my review for, or technically reaction review to, to chapter 1045, and it's a damn good chapter, like, I don't get the complaints, I seriously don't. Um, very good action chapter, just complete focus on that, and it was nice just to have Momo and uh, Yamato there as, spe as spectators and seeing this and witnessing this and realizing, holy crap, this is Luffy, like, like what is going on? And Kaido just being somewhat respectful, at least during this fight, so that's nice to see. But now we're moving on to chapter 1046, called Rizo. So yeah, again, this is bringing a lot of flashbacks. Uh, from what people are saying, the last time we got a chapter like this, I think it might have been... Uh, it might have been ten forty. It might have been seven forty six actually, and then it was and it was called guts or something about the announcer. This is when Luffy had just gone to the gear fourth. So it seems sort of history is repeating itself with all the sort of naming, naming a certain chapters on Pacific characters right after we had like this big action moment, and now it's like oh we had this action moment, and now we're cutting to some of the side stuff instead. Uh, that's going on. That's you know some of the more other important stuff that's going on that you know we still need to wrap up. So uh, yeah. Uh, I like this. I like where this is going. We just had the big moment with Luffy and Kaido. Now we're moving on to the, uh, basically, the supporting characters, the other main characters, and seeing what's going on there. But yeah, uh, moving on, basically. And remember, guys, to like and subscribe, please. Yeah. Let's do this, then. Give me a second to uh, rest up, and then we'll continue on. So, guys, 
And if you're still here and you're still watching, then good, because now we're moving on to the uh, next chapter review and reaction. Chapter 1046, Rizo. So yeah, we start with the next uh, cover page, which is uh, German 66, Cold Blooded Voyage, Volume 9, A Pair of Intruders on Pudding's Turf, Chocolate Town. So if you remember, two of uh, Sanji's brothers were taken and imprisoned in the uh, book that Big Mama has, and uh, they were left with some of uh, her children who were going to cut them up, it appears. Now we get the appearance of two intruders, and my assumption is that this is the other siblings, okay? This is Raichu, and I think, uh, who, who else was in there? Was it Nin Ninji, Yuji? So I, I don't even remember. I don't know I don't know the brothers' names because I keep forgetting, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's the it's Raichu and the, and the other sibling that have come in to help. And, yeah, uh, moving on to the actual main story, we cut to the... Uh, uh, Kaido versus Luffy fight. So yeah, we start this with the Luffy Kaido, over, you know, rightfully so because we, you know, we're, we're deep in the neck of this. We can't just like cut from then and suddenly it's nice to see the aftermath of what's going on this fight. And uh, Luffy's like, hmm, what should I call that last move? Gomu Gomu no something. And Kaido's like, uh, just tell me one thing. Kaido has a question. Who the hell are you? And, and Luffy just seems sort of confused by this. And then we cut to. Zushina. Remember, Zushina was like Joy Boy. This is Joy Boy. He's back. Like, Zushina clearly knows something that we don't. We now know that Joy Boy, whoever he was, clearly had the Gomu Gomu no Mi fruit or the Hiku Hiku no, no Mi fruit or whatever it was called. The Nika fruit, if you will. So, and she can tell that, that, that that's now jumped onto Luffy, that that fruit has gone into Luffy. So she, now she knows, or he knows, and he's like, how nostalgic that rhythm. Joy Boy. Hey, Joy Boy. And we get the sounds of the drums, you know, the doom da 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 da. Like, I'm wondering if this is going to be the sound that we get in the soundtrack for the anime, where it's like dun dun da 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 da. I'm wondering if that's how they're going to tie in, like, because that would be brilliant to have something that's been there since the very beginning of the series, and then and then tie it to that, like that. that that's the sound. That that sound we get of the soundtrack. Those 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 sort of drum like themes that rhythms that we get with the soundtrack has always basically been a massive massive foreshadowing and hint from the anime that this is what it was going to lead up to like so i'm hoping they do that i hope they sort of tie it to that when it comes to the anime but uh yeah zushina talking joy boy it's as if you're right there how exhilarating this all feels like fate i can't help but think that we should put our faith in this boy and uh who does he mean boy? I think I think I think Zushina means Luffy. Like like Zushina realizes this 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 boy, this this Luffy, like he's got your he's he's got your ability. He's got your ability like this is him. This he's like the chosen one maybe. Like we're gonna I'm gonna arm you, we're gonna put a faith in him now. Like he's gonna carry on your will. And you know, this is a story all about the you know, the wills of people being carried. And uh oh crap, sorry about that. So yeah, uh yeah, that's what it is, really. It's it's the will of people, and in this case, uh, Luffy it seems to be carrying on the will of Joy by whatever that is. But uh, I imagine once this arc is over and we get some downtime to sit down with Zushino, maybe we'll get some answers. But for now, yeah, Luffy's like, "Who me?" And I'm Monkey D. Luffy, the man who's gonna surpass you and become king of the pirates. So yeah, we get that moment then. And Luffy, Kaido, like, he's not again. He's not phased. He's not upset. He's just like smiling. He's like. Glad to see you still got that big mouth straw ad. We call this an awakening. Your mind and body are finally able to harness the potential of your ability and what a ridiculous power it is. And he goes for another, you know, and he's like, I've lost a lot in this war. My men, my castle, everything I've built here. But I suppose the same is true for you, huh? And Luffy's like, I'm not free yet. I'm taking back everything you've stolen, no matter what. And we go right back into the fight with Kaido, you know, going for his Gondiri Meteor Shower. You know, he's, he's losing the club to hit Luffy, and he's striking him. But, all, all, you know, it, and while it does seem to hurt Luffy, it just, it, it's not breaking or ripping him apart. It's just sort of stretching. Like, he's hitting Luffy, and that's what it's doing. Like, that's what the club is doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's, what it's, that's what's going on. Like, like, Spike's going in, and he's just sort of covering all of that. And Luffy going for his bunch is like, damn it, and he's hitting Kaido. And when he hits Kaido, Kaido's body itself appears to turn rubbery because we see like little like bubbles or whatever being formed. Like he's hitting through and the and the and the hits, the fists, whatever, they're going through 
the hits are going through and they're sort of expanding outwards like like that, like rubber basically, like a balloon. And you know, Luffy again he's coughing, he's coughing. It looks like it looks like he he doesn't have long to use this. And he's like, I have, have for fumes to reach up here, the whole castle must have gone up in flames. Right, we realize we realize the next problem of this. The fire has spread to the point where now the entire Onigashima is covered in it. Like the flames have now reached the point where they're reaching the roof, basically. And Kaido's like, that means thousands of your men. He, like, he's, he's, too, he, he, he's saying this to Luffy. He's like, that means thousands of your men are trapped in the inferno below. They're going to roast to death. And Luffy, again, smiling, not, 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 you know, no, no, no doubt there. He's like, I've left everything that's happening down there to them. I've got nothing to worry about other than sending you flying. So yeah, his aim is to send Kaido flying out of uh, Onigashima, basically, out of Wano. And yeah, Kaido's going for a hit. I don't know if this is, uh, yeah, he's going for it. And he's calling it devastating geist, and he goes for this punch or for for this hit with his club, and the air is going towards Luffy and Luffy ends up pulling himself upwards like he's stretching out his crotch and his legs upwards just to avoid the hit again like like a cartoon basically and then we cut to the life floor dome interior and you've got people panicking the castle burning everything's going we got Chopper reuniting with Nami and he you know he's like you know you know you know Chopper's like I can't find Zoro, Sanji, Frankie, Usa, Robin, you know Brooke, Ojibe I think they might still be trapped and we, we, we see, we, we, we get an outward shot of Onigashima and it's burning. And, he, and you know, we were still getting that conversation between Chopper and, and Nami. And it's like, how can we reach them? Onigashima is basically a giant py 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 pyro now. Even here isn't safe. There's nowhere to run unless we find a way to land. And, and he turns to Zeus and he's like, Zeus, what about your raid? And Zeus like, a flame this big would just eat me up. So yeah, Zeus can't be doing anything. They need war and they need it fast. They need something. And we cut to the basement castle interior. We've got, you know, we've got some of the characters, some of the, I think, uh, Beast characters there screaming. Again, no escape. They're surrounded. We're cut into uh, Law's pirate crew with Beppo. You know, he's exhausted. You know, he's dehydrated and they're trying to rescue him and get out. And, you know, you've got the people saying, you know, this might be in. I don't think we're going to make it. Captain, save us. We're cut into the basement. We got Brooke there. We got, I don't I don't know if this, like, these are the samurai characters or if these are uh, the beast pirate may, uh, characters that have joined them. But, you know, they're like, my lord, how awful. You must have suffered a lot to end up like this. And Brooke's like, it's a nice, it's a nice gag. It's like, no, 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 I'm not a burned up corpse, you hear? And and he's with Robin. Or as well, remember, he's with Robin. He rescued Robin. And I believe they also rescued, uh, they were with Zora as well, if I remember correctly. So, uh, Brooke, Zora, and uh, Robin are together, if I remember correctly, aren't they? No, they're not. They're not, because Zora got rescued by Frankie, actually, if I remember correctly. Uh, and, he, and Brooke's like, we have to find a way to get everyone outside. And Robin's like, there may be, not be one. So, yeah, these guys are trapped there. We're cut into the pleasure hall, left brain tower with Sanji and the women and the warriors there. And he's like, no good, even if we get outside, the garden is gone. So they're trapped there, and we cut to the basement. EBB and it's uh, what's his name? It's um, crap. What, what was the what was the supernova's name with the music? Uh, X Drake, uh, Capone. Uh, what was the monk's name? Orouge. Uh, uh, Apo, Apu, Apu, Apu. Sorry, it's Apu. Yeah. Apu? Is that how you say it? Apu? He's talking to one of those giant guys. It's like Ebi. And he's like, there's no point in having a big body if you don't use it. He's like, it's a mild burn. Like, so the giant's burned himself. And Apu's like, he's trying to get him to help him. He's like, it's a mild burn. Man up. Break the wall already before we both die. Who cares if it costs you an arm? And Ebi is like, there's no point in having a big body if you don't use it. Uh, Ebb, and he's like, "What? You're gonna? You want to go? You know, want to? You want to go, bastard?" So yeah, Apu is is trapped with this giant dude, and he's telling him to break the freaking wall so they can get out. Uh, that doesn't appear to be the case. So yeah, we got those. We basically got heroes and enemies, both sides trapped and about to burn to death. Essentially, we're cutting to the basement again, and we got we got we're with Usopp, and he's trying to use one of his uh, abilities, and it just shrivels up and burns. Uh, you know, he's he's with one of those uh, beast uh, beast star pirates, if you will, he's, he's the giraffe dude. And he's like, shut up, I've got to do something. I made a promise to Aizo. I'm going to save Kin, Kiku, and myself to boot. Uh, and he's like, don't forget about me, sir. <laughs> so a lot, of, a lot of comedic moments in this serious situation. And then we're cut into the right brain tower with Frankie 
and uh, Zoro now, uh, yeah, uh, you know, this fight is getting out of hand. Uh, which way, which way am, am I even meant to go? I gotta find Chopper soon, or Zoro's not gonna make it. We're gonna burn a dead before that. Keep whining, keep whining like a bunch of weaklings, and I'll burn you myself. And then we're cut into the full floor castle interior, and we're now we're with Jubei and uh, Raizo. If you remember, guys, Raizo was saved by Jubei, and. Uh, you know, it, J Rizo seems to be remembered. This chapter is also called Rizo. This is a, clearly a, about Rizo. Rizo is about to do something very important. He's about to do something serious, and we do get that. And it's marvelous. It's glorious. And it, again, it, it's nice for Rizo to get his moment. If you people weren't satisfied with the fight that he had, where he was basically sort of enduring, he gets his moment to shine here now where he ends up basically being responsible along with Jibay saving everyone in this castle before they get burned alive. Because what he does is uh, he's gone at the very far end uh, and he tells you know he tells Jibay, it is ready, Jibay Dono. I am truly grateful that you agreed to put your faith in me. And Jibay's like, Luffy decided to ally with you, Samurai. How could, how could I possibly doubt you? Now let's go, right? And clearly they got something set up, the both of them, and they're doing it. And Rizal's like, the feeling is mutual. I believe in you as, as well. Ever since that day, I swore I would never be unprepared. And we're cutting to that time period years ago, basically. For them, for them, it was only, what, a few weeks, months, maybe? But this took place years ago. This took place 20 years ago. And it's when their castle basically burned down. Uh, when, uh, when Kaido basically... This was after Oda had died and their castle was burning. And, um, you know, Momonosuke and ha uh, Hiyori basically lost their mother, Tokisama, if you will. And, you know, we, we see Raizo there with, I believe, Kinemon and uh, Kawawatsu. And they're trying to locate the family. They're trying to locate Oda's family. You know, they're looking for Tokisama, Momonosuke-sama, Hiyori-sama. The castle's just burning. They can't do anything. And we kind to Raizo and he's like, back then, I couldn't even protect my lord, Oda-sama. Meanwhile, Momonosuke Sama and the rest of his family almost burned in his castle. Despite my Nijutsu, I was unable to protect any of them. I can never make up for that failure. But I will never let myself be that helpless again. Ever. Never. And we cut to Zhao. And we see that moment when Zhao was basically, you know, when Zushina was basically cleaning herself or giving water to the Mings from the ocean. So yeah, Raizo feeling a lot of regret about what happened that time back then. And we're cut into a flashback with uh, you know when he was in Zhao, and it's it's Zhao, and, and and he's talking to uh, 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 Iro Rashi now. He's like, you know, Iro Rashi, what is that rain? It's Zushina washing itself. What an insane amount of water. May I take some? So clearly he took uh, all that water that Zushina used to wash herself, and he put it into one of his ninja scrolls. And we see this moment now where he's like, I will not allow the men who bravely joined our raid to die to a mere fire. Sorry for the delay. Sorry for the delay, everyone. Prepare to be doused with an unbelievable supply of water. Nimpu scroll scroll jutsu. Nini nini elephant bath. And he does his scroll. He opens it up, and water gushes out of it, and basically takes over that entire corridor, and it engulfs Jubei. Restore uh, restoration. Uh, and uh, I think that's what it's called, Nini Nini Elephant Bath Restoration, and it, and it goes Jubei, and Jubei is even surprised by how immense it is, and he grabs the water, water hard, he grabs, he pulls out the water, basically, and using his, you know, f you know, he's a fishman, he can do that, basically, and he uses his fishman jutsu, ocean current shoulder throw, and he holds the water, he holds it down into the direction of the flames, where it's coming from, and we, we cut to the various floors, we cut to the third floor, we cut with the gorilla screaming, you know, that they got a battle, that they won't lose to this fire. And we see water just gushing in and starting to put it out, uh, you know, and Jubei screaming, he's like, go, flood every corner of the castle, you know, he's talking to that water, and there's Raizo doing his thing, you know, please don't be too late, may the water of Zhao rescue our comrades. We cut to the first floor, we see Killer, he's being carried or being protected from the flames, they're stuck on the staircase. And you know, and you know, he's telling them to you know let him down on that. Oh, there's no, and you know, the trap. There's nowhere to go. And suddenly everything's shaking, and then you've got the water coming in, saving them. And then we cut to we, you know, we, we're cut, we're getting close to the end of this chapter where we're cutting to Onigashima, and again Yamato and Momonosuke did together. And he's like, "Hurry, Momonosuke, what? Why? Kaido's still alive." And we're cutting to Chopper, you know, and he's like, he's at his limit. He, you know. 
we were seeing the different elements, the different things that are happening. You know, choppers there burning as well in the hall, and the water's coming in. I think, I think the water's coming in, or they're still burning. But Yamato's like, he's at his limit. We won't be able to sustain his flame clouds much longer. We see Yamato pulling on Momonosuke's whiskers and he's like, it's up to you now. You need to make clouds strong enough to hold Onigashima. This was always our only option. And, and Momo, you know, it's like, what? Like, seriously, it's kind of crazy that Momo still hasn't done that. He's, he's been using his abilities to pull, to pull Onigashima away from the flower capital so that in case it did fall, it wouldn't land on there. So he's achieved that. But now they need to land the bloody thing. They need to land it because if Kaido gets defeated, there's nothing going to be holding that, you know, holding the castle up, holding that area. It's going to drop. So Momonosuke has pulled it away from Wano. Great, great job. And uh, Jubei and Raizo are now putting out the fire. Great. And the explosions have been stopped and frozen. Great. Well, the thing is still going to fall. So now they got to do something and they got to lower it, basically. And the chapter basically ends with a final panel shot of Luffy and Kaido. You know, you know, Kaido from the back staring up at Luffy. He's who's in the sky, and he's got hold of of a lightning bolt. You know, there's lightning striking down on Onigashima now, and there's Luffy crackling, laughing, and he's got a bolt of lightning in his hand. He looks like a freaking god, basically. He looks like like the real life like god of olympus zeus here with the freaking lightning like a lightning shaped like a lightning blade so whatever it is he's got it in his freaking hand he's got it he's got it he's holding it and he's going down on kaido with it like that's an insane shot seriously hands down my favorite panel of this chapter like just that ending panel like what a cliffhanger man what an insane cliffhanger and it's badass it's badass but yeah guys it, the fire is clearly being stopped. Probably by next chapter, that fire is going to be stopped. It's going to be gone, and all the characters are going to be safe. But Momonosuke now has to lower. You know, he has to do something to lower that freak. You know, to lower Onigashima before everyone else on top of there dies. Unless you got characters who who can fly and take everyone off, but that's not going to happen because you got like hundreds, thousands of people up there. So it needs to be freaking lowered. Zora is still dying. Frankie's trying to get him help. We still don't know what's going on. What that well, you know, what was up with that whole Grim Reaper thing. Um, uh, obviously the other characters they're, they're most likely going to get rescued with the war and that so you know they're pretty much fine but at the moment you, we still got to deal with that we, we got to deal with the you know Onigashima being lowered safely we got to deal with the remaining fires being put out which is about to happen uh, we got to see what's going on with Zoro there because something's happened we don't know what but something's happened and then obviously we get the, this final fight with Kaido versus Luffy now and uh, I will say this since, since last chapter when we saw Luffy go big as a giant uh, a lot of theories are going around that maybe Luffy's going to end up pulling that giant sword out of Onigoshima and using it. Maybe that's going to happen. I, I, I kind of want to see that. But at the same time, I'm kind of hoping that maybe Zoro wakes up and, and we get something with him. Like maybe like uh, a final power-up or attack. Because uh, a lot of us were theorizing that maybe he would end up opening his eye and we would get this big massive reveal where it's like, oh, this is like a power-up that he's, that he's holding off on using. But uh, that clearly didn't happen yet. But... Uh, I don't know, I want Zoro to do something. I, I feel like there's still something there that we haven't seen with Zoro yet. And I, I, want, I, I kind of want to see him sort of being involved in this final fight with Luffy to help him out maybe with, with Kaido. They're like maybe helping Luffy get the finishing blow in. Because I don't just want it to be like, oh yeah, Luffy beats up and that's it. Like, you know, that's it. Like, I want I want it to be a bit more over to it because, uh, I don't know, I just, I just feel like it should be more than one person taking on an Emperor, if that makes sense. But uh, if, if Luffy does beat him, I'm not going to complain. It's going to be awesome if it happens. Uh, I mean, it, it looks like Luffy can handle himself, but uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to think if that sword's going to end up playing a role. If, if Zoro's going to be the one involved in it, maybe like maybe maybe he's going to pull a ride in, like for Metal Gear Solid, you know, Metal Gear Rising, and he's going to end up using some giant uh, sword. Like I don't know. That'll, that'll be pretty sweet, but we'll have to wait and see. But I just want Zoro to do something in the final moments of this arc, basically, because the sort of the sort of same way that like Elia Cake Island was basically very focused on Sanji. I kind of wanted Zoro to get that focus here on Wano because I feel like this was supposed to be his arc, but we haven't really gotten that if that makes sense. So that's kind of disappointing from that aspect. But uh, overall, this was a great bloody chapter. We end with just that look with Luffy and Kaido, and it's like taking the future into their own hands. And yeah, man, what a great freaking chapter. What a great freaking chapter. Some great freaking moments. Um, I just can't wait to see how Oda's going to top this off with next chapter. And then obviously we're going to go on a week break afterwards. But yeah, uh, ooh, 
Chef's kiss, man. That, that was uh, that was great. That was bloody great. Anyway, guys, that was my review and reaction to chapter of uh, of 1045 and 1046 of One Piece. I hope you liked it. As always, guys, remember to like and subscribe. My voice is about to go. I still have a sore bloody throat. Uh, uh, I still don't feel very 100% uh, of course uh, because you know COVID to Jesus so to be fair it felt more like a flu to be honest than it did uh, I mean I don't even know what co you know, how what COVID's supposed to feel like I mean it felt more like I had a flu than that but uh, anyway I hope I get much better soon but uh, yeah uh, great chapter and I can't wait for next week I hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah I shall see you when I shall see you take care and bye